Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Psychiatric evaluation ordered for woman charged over theft of courthouse keys. The woman charged in relation to the disappearance of keys belonging to the St. Andrew Parish Court has been ordered to undergo a psychiatric evaluation. The order was made on Tuesday by Parish Judge Nicole Kelly. Janet Fletcher, who is charged with simple larceny, was reminded to reappear in court on October 14. Allegations are that on September 13, she visited the Spanish Town Police Station to make a report, and while there, she reportedly removed a bunch of keys belonging to the parish court. The keys are held at the police station for safekeeping. An intelligence-driven operation was conducted by the police, which led cops to Fletcher's home in St. Catherine. The police reported that the keys were found at the premises. She was taken into custody and later charged with simple larceny. Walmart's mourn death of fifth former accidentally shot by father. Dwight Pennycock, principal of the Walmart's Boys School, says a small army of grief counseling and well wishers have rallied around the school community in the wake of the tragic death of a 15 year old student on Wednesday morning. The young woman, Marion Rahim Shaw, was a member of Form 5R at the Hero Circle Institution. He was reported the shot at home by his father in a case of mistaken identity, as his 51 year old father reportedly mistook him for an intruder. The year group supervisor, Mrs. Colin Grant, has been taking it very hard. She is also his teacher, his POB teacher. It has come as a very heavy blow because they interacted last Friday. As it is right now, we would have done significant grief counseling up to 10.45 a.m. with our fifth form group and its immediate room, 5R. We have pulled them out for group counseling, the principal told reporters. The member of the 5R, have been receiving counseling support from members of the Guidance and Counseling Unit from Region 1, supported by guidance counselors from Wilmer's Girls School and St. Andrew High School for Girls, Kingston College and Camperdown. They have provided excellent grief counseling support. We have some of the young men who are having a difficult time processing this. They are still in sessions, while those who are doing a little better have returned to classes to give them a little space to think about something different, the principal said. Pentecost praised the Wilmer's Old Boy Association, whose members have provided invaluable support to the young student population. They mobilized this morning, and a number of them came by, and those who could actually visit assisted counseling. They have done so, and they have been there for the youngsters, Pentecost said. This is the second Wilmerian who have died in the last five months. In May, David Minot, a Wilmer's Boy High School student, joined during a beach trip at the Somerset Falls in Hope Bay, Portland on Sunday. We are still grappling with the loss of David Minot, and so now, this is yet another blow for this year group, a different class but the same year group, he said. The tragic death mirrors that of Pia Phillips, an Immaculate High School head girl, who was allegedly shot accidentally on November 1, 2008 by her father, a Lassifer arm holder, who ran from the house to protect his wife and daughter from the men who had accosted them. Phillips, who celebrated her 18th birthday the same day, had reported a just arrived home with her mother, from choir practice when the tragic unfold. Police reports are that Philip and other family members were about to enter the house when two gunmen alighted from a car and demanded that they come to them. Scared, the victims reported the scream and ran towards the house. Philip's father, who was inside the house, pulled his gun and rushed to the defense of his family. However, he allegedly slipped and the gun went off hitting Philip's in her abdomen. NWA warns against scariest land clearing amid landslides. In light of the landslides triggered by the autobahns of the tropical storm Eon, the National Works Agency NWA is urging residents to be careful how they clear lands for forming or building houses. Community Relations Officer for the NWA Western Region Janet Ricketts says that vegetation that holds us together is removed from hillside during land clearing activities. She said that this in turn results in land slippages in long term which can result in potential loss of life and damage to property. Even though we have state agencies responsible for different elements, such as the main road network and the drainage system, citizens also have to be proactive for their own protection. This is in terms of how you clear areas for farming, especially along the hillside, when you remove vegetation, but the vegetation helped to hold the soil together Ricketts dress. She said, providing an update at the agency assessment of the storm's impact on western Jamaica, it was disclosed that communities in Trelawney, Hanover and Westmoreland were among several across Jamaica 
which suffered landslides as a result of rainfall associated with the storm. Ricketts also noted that cleaning up efforts are still ongoing at different drains across the western region and also along the Fame Elegant Corridor. Williams wants JPS to prioritize her constituency for electricity regularization. Member of Parliament MP for St. Andrew Eastern Favour Williams has urged the Jamaica Public Service JPS to prioritize regularization of electricity to some communities in her constituency. Admitting that the cost of foreign houses for electricity was out of the reach of many, Williams said that through the Jamaica Social Investment Fund JSIF and the use of her constituency development fund, she has been able to assist residents in Gold Summit Villa and Standpipe. Williams said she has also encouraged residents to enter into prepaid electricity arrangements with the JPS. Let me assure the community of Fallen in Tavern that I am committed to ensuring that the infrastructure that was in store for electricity, for which the work was stopped, will restart and be completed, Williams said, in her contribution to the state of constituency debate in Garden House. I have worked assiduously to bring employment opportunities, and committee members know that I have been seeing that communities have to honor their civic obligations and pay for the water and the electricity they consume. I have been very vocal on this, she said. Meanwhile, Williams said that investment will be made to create six spaces for recreational and other activities for residents in Hemorrhage, African Gardens, and Goldsmith Villa in August Town. She said the project is estimated to cost $10 million and will benefit some 11,000 residents. She added that the project represents a continuing build phase of the zone of special operation that has been implemented by JSIF. The design will include small parks, gardens, roadside greenery, and vegetation barriers. Fencing will also be installed at selected spaces. Man convicted of beheading lover, one sentence squashed. A 58-year-old businessman who beheaded the mother of his child and threw her body in a septic tank in 2012 is now fighting to have his 20 years life sentence set aside and his murder conviction squashed in the Court of Appeal. The matter started in the appellate court on Monday and will continue on Thursday with arguments from attorney at law to a senior Smith who is representing the appellant, Trevor Tuff. The decomposed body of 26-year-old Higlon, Nicole Heron, who had a chop wound to her face and vagina and multiple stab wounds to her neck, was found in a tank at her lover's home a month after she was reported missing. Heron, who at the time had a six-month-old daughter with the businessman, was last seen by her parents on April 3, 2012, into Trevor's home in Havendale, St. Andrew. Following the discovery of her body, along with the burnt remains of her clothes, a wig that she was wearing as well as her phone and electrical charges at Trevor's home, he was arrested and charged with murder. The then 52-year-old father of eight was subsequently convicted of murder in July 2016 by a seven-member jury in the Home Circuit Court and sentenced by Justice Evan Brown. His conviction, however, was based purely on circumstantial evidence as there was no eyewitness or forensic evidence tying him to the gruesome murder. Among the evidence presented was that he had told her own sister when she had called and inquired about her sister's whereabouts that she had gone to Ultras at a stage show and would return soon. The court also heard that when the sister called him again, he told her that her sister would soon pop up like peas. Another piece of evidence that was used by Trevor had indicated that he had reported her own missing, but checks found that he had only reported two television missing from his home. The investigator in the case also testified that after he started probing the missing report, he could not locate Trevor at his home or workplace even though he had spoken to Trevor lawyers twice. The investigator further testified that after Heron's body was found, the police found Trevor in a one-bedroom home in Duane Park, St. Andrew, and that when he was captured, Trevor held his hand above his head declaring, Daniel God will surely deliver me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The court also heard that when the police informed him that they wanted to speak about Heron, he started speaking in tongues and later indicated that he was only praying. The businessman, however, has maintained his innocence even after his conviction, claiming he loved the mother of his child and would never hurt her. Trevor, in his defense, claimed that he left Heron at home on April 5th in the company of his nephew and a worker. On his return the following day, he said he did not see any of them but discovered his televisions missing. Senior Simit, among the groans of Peel, are that the trial judge ought to have upheld that no case submission and that the judge failed to deliver a balanced assessment of the cases 
for the prosecution and defense. The judge's summing up was weighed more towards the prosecution than the defense. The judge did not achieve a balance and there were bits of evidence that were not allowed that prejudiced the appellant, he said. Senior Simit also argued that the judge has failed to give the jury direction about the prejudice arising from the content of the question and answer session which his client had participated. Please remember to subscribe, like, share and click the notification bell.